Hello, everyone. Um, I'm doing well, and you've been enjoying it so far. My name's James. I'm going to be talking about how dental is involved in global health and health um, during time at dental school. Um, just before I start, I just want to say thank you very much to all the team at Health Careers Live, um, to Raj for getting me involved, um, to Ben, who's just been helping me with the, the technical side of things, and to, to Callum as well who's been, been organizing everything behind the scenes. So without further ado, um, I will share my presentation and we can get started. Okay. Okay, marvelous. So um, as I said, my name's James Coughlin. Um, I'm a final year student at Barts and the London School of Medicine and Dentistry. Um, and I'm also the president of the European Dental Students Association. And kind of the talk that I'm going to give today has got two sides to it. So the first side is how to make the most of your time at dental school um, in extracurricular activities. Um, now that might be sort of directly related to, to public health and global health, or it, it might not be. Um, it might be some student organizations, it might be you know other kinds of organizations. So that's the first part. And the second part is to really sort of talk a little bit about um, the ways that you can get involved in public health and global health specifically um, while you're at dental school. Now, a little bit about me, this is um, a, a very link, LinkedIn picture of myself. Um, and there's some contact links if you want to get in touch, if you have any questions, um, my Twitter, LinkedIn, email, um, do feel free to reach out to me either, you know, afterwards. And uh, if you've got any questions for me that I haven't answered at the end of the presentation, then I'm, I'm always happy to, to speak to people. Um, now, I was thinking a, a little bit about how I would sort of describe myself. And the first thing that pops into your mind is obviously all of the places where you know you study, um, things that you've got involved with. So as I said before, I'm a final year dental student at Barts and the London School of Medicine and Dentistry, which is part of Queen Mary University of London. Um, might be more familiar with that name. Um, and I've just come back from, I took an intercalated year out and I did a, an MSc in public health and health economics at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Um, and I'll come back to intercalating a bit later on in the talk but um, I would really say that my year at London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine was absolutely fantastic. And um, I'd really recommend um, both LSHDM as an institution and also intercalating uh, for dental students. And I'll come back to that a little bit later on. Now, obviously, as you can tell by the name of the talk, um, a lot of the things that I've been involved with at dental school have been extracurricular. Um, so you can see down the bottom right, um, Barts and London Tennis Club, um, Barts and London Dental Society. These are some of the first societies that I got involved with um, at dental school. And they're really sort of um, platforms for me to get more involved in, in stuff outside of the dental school. Um, and as I mentioned before, I'm president of the European Dental Students Association or EDSA, um, as I'll probably call it throughout the talk. Um, and again, that has been one of the best experiences um, during my time at dental school. I've really met some amazing people. I've got to do some amazing things. Um, and I'll sort of talk a little bit about some of those as we go along. Um, and there's some other things on here as well. So um, through school, um, I got involved with Health Education England and they did a, a project on advancing dental care, which was all about looking at education and training. Um, and I sat on one of the, the panels for that, looking at how education and training can really be improved for dental students, looking at ways that they can develop um, and improve. Uh, through my work um, in EDSA and my interest in public health, I got involved um, with ACFF, who are the Alliance for Cavity Free Future. Um, and I'm currently sitting on, on a board there, which is looking at um, creating a, a resolution for the World Health Assembly um, to try and bring a greater awareness and a greater sense of action towards oral health globally. Now, obviously, you can talk about all these different things that you're a part of, but I think it's really kind of important to stress that um, a lot of these things are really great ways to meet some fantastic people. And, you know, for all the hard work that you do, there's always some really great people that you can have great times with. Um, 
through you know I've, my role um as editor of the um, the dental mirror which was a magazine that i started at queen mary and i got to meet loads of people from across the university that i would never have come into contact with otherwise you know people that were doing english people that were doing um literature people that were doing uh international relations and it was really cool meeting all those different people uh, when i was at lshgm there were people that were coming to the university from all over the world um you know every single continent every single place um people with really wide ranges of experiences and and that was was great as you can can see from the picture on the left there um and obviously through my time at edsa i've met some fantastic dental students from across europe really amazing people operational people that are um above and beyond in entries to really raise the profile of oral health really improve things for dental students um, and some of the like best times that I've had at university have been um, meeting all these uh, all these cool people and, and having you know having a good time with them um, so obviously it's been a little bit different um, in the last sort of six months or so these are some of the, the screenshots from the public relations head has uh, has put together a magazine and you can see that even when we can't be together uh, physically as it's been really difficult to do so during coronavirus um, we still had amazing times uh, online still get to connect with all these amazing people people and um, that we have at uh, the new team we've not actually met in person yet but um, it's been really great to get to know everyone over over Zoom, over Microsoft Teams. Sometimes it's a bit of a pain talking to everyone uh, online. You know, you do get used to it. This is an introduction to, to me, um, but obviously that's not the main point of my talk. So we'll move on to, to what I'm actually here to talk about. Um, so the first part is getting involved in public health and global health at dental school. Um, and You'll see at the bottom of each of my slides, I've got some some little graphics, and as the as the presentation goes on, they become more and more uh, absurdly linked to what it actually is I want to say. But so do forgive the uh, the graphics at the bottom. Um, and I think the first thing to say, obviously, is that as dental students, I think it's quite easy for us to become uh, sort of hemmed in in our bubble, in the dental bubble. Um, you know, you're surrounded every day. It's a very intense course by by dental students, and you're you know working really hard on on dentistry. But you know, everyone is interested in in different things that are going on in the world. You know, some people are really interested in politics. People that are following the election in America really closely. Um, probably very frustrated after watching for for days on end. But you know, some people are really interested in the environment, animal welfare. Um, in refugees, in digital technologies, um, you know whether that be like how social media works, whether that's new emerging technologies like 5G um, and artificial intelligence. You know, some people are really interested in arts and literature, and I think quite often as dental students, we have the tendency to keep these things um, separate. You know, think that this is this is something separate, and then there's dentistry. And I think it's really important that to sort of realize that just because you're a dental student these things um they shouldn't be kept separate you know they're all part of progressing um and moving forward to become uh you know a leader a youth leader in healthcare um which is you know what we should really all be aspiring to be um the second thing to say about public health and global health is you know don't be put off by preconceptions you know those of us that are lucky enough to, to get some education in public health um, because not everyone does get an education in public health at dental school you know we come across these things dmft numbers odds ratios cohort studies and it all seems um can be quite sort of boring to start with um and people get put off because they think that public health is um you know it's just statistics and that that's all there is to it you know it's, it's sitting behind a desk it's figuring out an odds ratio, um, it's calculating a DMFT figure. But actually, I think it's really important to, to get away from that preconception. You know, public health is not just sat behind a screen. And some of the, the best experiences that I've had that have been to do with public health and, you know, health policy um, have been when 
it's kind of come out, come away from, from your screen and, and get out into the real world um, and sort of see how public health and global health really interact there. Um, and I'll, I'll come back to those as well. And I'll come, come back to this final point, which is that a lot of people think, oh, I'm just a dentist. You know, why does this matter to me? Um, and I really think that um, it's, it's important that you realize that you're not just a dentist, you know, you have your dental training and that's really important, but you're also a healthcare leader. Um, and this idea of leadership is something that I think is really important to, to get across. Um, you know, so you're so much more than just a dentist. And I think getting away from these preconceptions that we should, you know, just stay in our box, just worry about teeth. Um, is is really important and i think especially with things like global health it can seem you know you hear about it and you think that's quite inaccessible either because you don't you know it seems like something that goes on in in faraway places you know because you think that you need to travel um to do global health and again i think it's really important not to be put off by these sort of preconceptions that we have because global health is just as important locally as it is um you know globally because where i am in east london we have a, a really big bangladeshi community um and they're they make up a lot of the, the patients that we treat and so it's really important to understand the cultural context of, of where you're working understand the different um you know habits and health behaviors that different groups will have that different countries have that different health systems have um to be able to to really give the best sort of person-centered care, you know, making sure that the people that we treat are really put at the heart of everything we do as dental students. Um, and I think the third thing that I'd start off by saying is to really, you know, get out of your comfort zone. And this is where the graphics start going a bit downhill. Um, but, you know, it's so important, you know, obviously in all parts of your life to get out of your comfort zone, but especially in something like public health and global health, one of the best things about them is that they're really transdisciplinary um, areas. You know, they they involve a lot of different things. So you can bring your experience that you have of, of treating patients and, and understanding how how patients think and understanding the interactions between uh, a dentist and a patient, and you can combine those with um, you know with politics, with with economics, with sociology. Um, international affairs and loads and loads and loads of other disciplines um, and I think for me that's really one of the best things um, about public health is that you can get to explore all of these different areas um, and but also bring that knowledge that you've gained in dental school uh, excuse me really gain bring that knowledge that you've gained in dental school um, to to the arena as well because you realize that when you come outside of that dental school bubble that that people don't really understand what it means to be a healthcare professional. They don't kind of understand the realities of it. And so that's a real asset that you, you know, you bring to that. Um, and also some of the most unconventional things that I've done, um, you know, some of the organizations that I've worked with that, you know, even haven't been dental related um, have been really, you know, valuable. I've met some really interesting people, um, learned some really interesting things that I would never have got if I'd just, stayed in that kind of narrow dental school um, situation. So this next slide, I sort of got to this point and I thought, well, you know, I'm, I'm talking about all this stuff, but people kind of want to know, you know, why as a dental student or as a, you know, hygiene therapy student, um, or even just as a, a healthcare student, a, a doctor or a pharmacist, why, why should I care about public health? And I think I'm gonna, gonna give three sort of reasons. There are plenty more, um, but I'll touch on three. And, and the first one is everything that the coronavirus has thrown up. And this doesn't mean, you know, just learning about, you know, the new types of masks, the new protective equipment, the new lockdown measures, you know, new tests, you know, yeah, they're important, but what, I think coronavirus has really um, demonstrated to me is that dentistry and oral health are so reliant on other parts um, of the healthcare system and the decisions that are made in, in other places outside of dentistry. 
Um, and I mean, during the lockdown, a lot of dental practices got closed down. Obviously, dental schools got closed down. And it's one of the things that, you know, we're all still struggling with, you know, how, how do we get the right clinical experience? And a lot of these questions come back to, to public health. And I think when you look at where dentistry is going to go after the coronavirus, there's a lot of questions um, that some training, some knowledge in public health can really help you to, to investigate, you know. Um, why is dentistry so isolated from the rest of healthcare? Um, you know, trying to trying to interact with the different parts of the healthcare system is really difficult. And those of you that have, have treated patients will know that trying to find out information about their you know medical history, about the tests that they've had done before, even in other parts of the dental sector, you know, in their NHS practices, is is really difficult. So you know, why is that? How can we? integrate dentistry more into the rest of healthcare and again this is something that sort of public health and, and the ways of looking at things through a public health lens um, can really help you with um, you know but also other things that, that seem sort of completely unrelated to everything that you've done at dental school how should dentists get paid um, and especially now that people can't do as much treatment you know what's the best way to pay to pay a dentist these are the things that um, you know, in my intercalated year, um, I did a lot of health economics. And to me, that's it's super fascinating. And you speak to people and they, they're all really interested in, in how the sort of payment system works, how um, different people are, are paid. And these are things that, that public health can, can teach you as well. You know, other things, again, completely, completely different, you know, how useful are digital technologies in providing oral health care? You know, we've seen a lot of telemedicine happening where people are getting their appointments over video. How useful is that for oral healthcare? Like what's the way that we can use those new technologies and how do we evaluate those new technologies? And, you know, to me, these are all really um, questions that are going to impact on the way that we as dentists work in the future. And I think it's really important for us to have some, some knowledge of that. Um, and I think, what coronavirus has shown is that there's a real need for dentists to become healthcare leaders. And, and I've mentioned that word leader and leadership um, a few times, but I think it's so important that dentists learn not just how to, to treat patients, but how to advocate for oral health and advocate for their patients in a wider context, you know, in a wider context of the healthcare system. And to do that, they need to be able, um, you know, really to, to know how the system works, know the place that the dentistry and oral health take at the moment and the place that they should take, you know, which is a much more um, prominent position than, than is given at the moment. And, you know, needing, they need to know how to improve healthcare and how to improve dental care in, you know, the best way and in the most equitable way, um, which means that the services are provided to people on the basis of their need and not just their ability to pay um, and making sure that, that we can, you know, making sure that that's fair is something that having a, a sort of public health knowledge really helps you with. Now, the second thing is to, to why people should care about public health um, is because, you know, just, just the basic fact that, that loads of people still don't have health care. Um, you know, one of the great privileges of, of being at dental school is that you get that knowledge and that ability uh, to treat patients and to see that what the actions see the actions that you're doing helping another human being and i think everyone that's treated a patient that's been really grateful um where they've gotten out of pain where they've really improved their life knows that really great feeling that you get um you know in in treating patients but one of the things that the public health does is it doesn't just look at the patients that come in and that get health care but also those that don't have health care and how we can really engage them and how we can help uh, ensure that they also receive the health care they require. Um, you know, people often think that people not having health care is, is, is a problem in, you know, faraway countries, in, you know, low and middle income countries. But even, you know, even here in the UK where we have the NHS, there are a lot of vulnerable groups that really, that really struggle to access healthcare. Um, you know, if you think about uh, documented migrants, refugees, um, if you think about people that are experiencing homelessness, um, people with severe, um, uh, you know, you name it, there are lots and lots of 
groups of vulnerable ones that really struggle um, to, to access healthcare and there are not always the services that are needed. And being able to, to really advocate for those people um, I think is a really important part of being a health professional and to bring awareness of that fact to, to politicians, to the general public, um, you know, even to other healthcare workers that, that might not know as much about this. Um, so I think it's really important. And I mean, if you take a wider healthcare perspective, I mean, there's literally billions of people, billions of people in the world who either don't have access to healthcare or the healthcare that they can access is, is of a poor quality. And for a lot of these people, um, even accessing those healthcare services um, puts them at really big risk of, of falling into poverty because of the amount they'll have to pay for those services. And so I think having, having one eye on, on all of the issues that are out there is really important as healthcare professionals. And I think it's, it's a real sort of social responsibility that we have um, to make sure that we don't forget about those that, that can't access um, the services that, that we provide on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and finally, I think I sort of, is a healthcare careers conference, and so I wanted to talk um, a little bit about this from a, a career point of view. And, you know, obviously we've seen with the issues that, that are, you know, happening in dentistry in terms of people being able to provide care. I know a lot of dentists are really, really worried about, about their jobs and their careers. Now, you know, hopefully things will go back to normal, but it always helps to have some, you know, uh, different skills that you can offer in these situations. And I think what coronavirus has really shown us is that an understanding of public health is a really in-demand skill. Now, that might be in terms of coordinating dental services, because you need to understand what's going on, um, you know, with COVID, people that are able to understand the epidemiology of COVID, that under that are able to understand how that impacts on a dental surgery will be really well placed to make sure that they've got all the precautions that are, that are needed. But, you know, there I've come into contact with a lot of people that trained as dentists that work part time as a dentist and part time in other fields, you know, people that are working for, you know, a public health body like Public Health England um, or a local local uh, sort of council public health office, you know, people that are working for, for companies. Um, that specialize in, you know, either in health policy, in, in medical technologies, you know, little sort of startups that are looking at how AI can be used, um, management consultancy, that all of these things that we think of as being for, for people with other degrees are all things that you can do as a dental student. And it doesn't have to be all of your time, um, but it does really give you that flexibility to explore other avenues that you might be interested in um, rather than just being a, a sort of a general dentist five days a week um, and I think it's really it can keep life interesting as well you know being able to do all these different things it gives you a chance to spend some time away from the surgery and then to really value that time that you, that you do get being a dentist um, and some people go on to get really senior roles I mean um, one of my uh, mentors who was actually speaking earlier um, Dr Sam Shah um, he trained as a dentist, qualified from, from Barts, um, and he went on to be a, a director at NHS England, you know, one of the, a really senior role in the NHS, not just looking at dentistry, but looking at emergency care, um, looking at general practice and, and the digital side of things. Um, and there's, there's loads of people out there that have gone on um, to have really senior roles, you know, within dentistry and outside of dentistry as well. So it is really good for your career. Um, now, does this sound like something you're interested in? Um, I, I hope so. Um, I hope I haven't managed to put you off um, so far in the, you know, what is it, 20 minutes that I've been talking. Um, and so I thought as, you know, for the next couple of minutes, what I do is just um, go through a few areas of, of public health and, um, yeah, I get uh, public health, global health that seem to be very separate but are actually things that are people in dentistry are working on to try and figure out how how they can get involved how they can bring these things in um so the first one is is environmental health and obviously climate change has been absolutely excuse me climate change has been absolutely at the top of the agenda um you know we've seen um 
demonstrations on the street, um, you know, led by people like Greta Thunberg um, and the Fridays for Futures movement. And I think that that shows sort of two things. One, how much of an issue this is, um, but also how the youth voice and how meaningful leadership from young people can really change things. Um, I mean, you'd look at the amount of countries that have declared the, um, declared a climate crisis um, and announced measures to, to tackle climate change. And it just shows you what a, what a big issue this is. And, and, you know, there's people that are working on the environmental side of dentistry. Uh, I mean, uh, even as students, I mean, uh, one of my colleagues uh, at Bart's, uh, Arafe, she's just published a paper in the British Dental Journal about um, the environmental impact of dentistry. And, you know, people like Professor Brett Duane um, in Dublin, Ireland, uh, working, doing some great work on this, looking at how dentistry really impacts on the environment, looking at the, the CO2 emissions, how travel, for example, impacts on the CO2 emissions and whether we need to start thinking about how we have appointments um, changing based on having a reduced number of visits, whether we have longer appointments, you know, whether people come with their whole family to reduce the, the emissions that, that causes. And on the other side of things, you look at um, amalgam and obviously some people aren't even being taught amalgam at the moment, but obviously amalgam and the debates around amalgam are really big in the global stage. You know, people like the UN, uh, UNESCO, who you've probably heard of, um, they're looking very closely at amalgam and the impacts on the environment. So dentistry has a real, real links with these things and, and understanding these issues can really help both advocate for dentistry um, and also for these issues from the from the point of view of dentistry. Um, I spoke spoke before about e-health. Um, now, there are loads of ways that people are, are finding to, to engage digital technologies to improve health. And some of these seem very obvious when you have uh, telemedicine appointments um, where people are, you know, seeing uh, doctors, seeing dentists over their smartphones. But um, as we go on, there'll be even more of these technologies, you know, health apps that are looking at, at what people eat, um, you know, the interaction between uh, biomarkers and, and apps as well. You know, we're seeing some of those in, in diabetes at the moment um, and automatic insulin pumps and things like that. And, and you do wonder when those kind of things will start filtering through into dentistry. And you wonder when they'll filter through, but they'll filter through when uh, dental students and dentists really get involved in, in public health and looking at how these technologies are helping and, and where they can be applied to dentistry. You know, these things don't just happen by themselves and you have the opportunity as students to, to go and be the people that make the real big changes in these things. You know, there's so many opportunities uh, to do that. Um, and health inequalities as well. I mean, one of the things that COVID has really um, brought up is, is how sort of unequal health is distributed across society. And that is definitely true in dentistry. Um, and there's some work that's going on on this at the moment, but there really needs to be more looking at it, how we can solve these issues, how we can um, help reduce those inequalities. And, you know, as, as students calling for these things, you know, making our voices heard to say that we're not prepared for um, people uh, from minority ethnic backgrounds to have poorer health qualities you know we, we will not accept that that's you know really i think a really big thing that we can do and, and people listen to young people and people listen to students and i think that's something to really hammer home that you have a voice and that voice is powerful so i've kind of rambled on um so i'm going to talk about things that you can do getting involved at, at dental school and i've split this into to three parts so the first one are things that you can do locally um, now, I think one of the things to talk about in terms of doing things locally is that it's a great chance to experiment in different roles. Um, I was part of the tennis um, society and I organized an international tour back when going abroad was still something that you could do. Um, and that was a really great experience. And it's really helped, um, you know, in my role in EDSA when we're, we're trying to plan international events, you know, that's something that I had experience of before. And it's completely different. Um, you know, different area, but it's a skill that, you know, I've learned. Um, it's great to start working with your friends, people that you know, people that you like. Um, it can often make things, you know, a lot easier. And there's a lot of opportunities locally. You know, every university has, you know, loads of societies that you can get involved with. And it's great because it means you can try out different things, 
there's a low level of commitment to start with, um, but you can gradually build that up and you get to see the, the things that you do uh, firsthand. You know, you, if you're putting on an event, you get to see people coming along to that event and learning things and enjoying themselves and you, know, you get to know them and you start to build a, a skill set, which I think is really important. And I think sometimes when people want to get involved at the national level, at the international level, one of the things that you know, we as organizations, international organizations look for are the skills that people bring. And I think that's even more true when you get out into um, you know, professional organizations. And I know a lot of people are really interested in, in volunteering um, and you know, volunteering abroad as well. And what a lot of you, what you hear those charities say is that we need people with skill sets. You know, think, and that's what the local opportunities bring you is a chance to develop some of those skills. You know, whether it's um, writing, whether it's graphic design, um, whether it's learning about public health, all of those skills and all of that knowledge that you build up are really the foundations that will set you up going forward. And then you have the, the national opportunity. And I think it's really, really great opportunities nationally to, to meet new people from other universities and to start to get that different perspective outside of your, um, your bubble. Because the way that things are done, for example, in Newcastle compared to in London might be completely different. And it's something that you can really reflect on and go, mm, is that actually, is that better the way they do it there? Um, and you get to meet all these new and interesting people and you start to build up that network of people. And I'll, I'll come back to networking um, in a minute, but it's really, really great to meet all these new people and to have those different ideas because a lot of the work that we do um, you know, almost all the work that's done either locally, nationally or, or internationally all relies on collaboration. And, and I can't emphasize that enough. Collaborating um, really gets things done and it really makes things that you don't think are possible, um, possible. And, and you get to engage with different issues. I think when I was on the advancing dental care um, panel, um, we were looking at education across England and, and how that varied between dental schools, how many people were able to intercalate, how many people were able to um, you know, carry on with research when they finished their studies and, and looking at these kind of national issues that are affecting people. And I think it's really interesting. And then finally, we've got the um, international perspective. Um, and I think being able to meet people from all across the world is, is so fantastic. And I think EDSA and the ability that that's given me to meet you know, so many people has been um, really one of the biggest privileges that I've had um, throughout my time. And, and I have to give credit to my university for really helping me with that and really facilitating that and supporting that. Um, and I, I would really encourage you to, tr to try and get involved and, and because you do, you learn a lot about um, global health, you learn a lot about international affairs and you learn how completely different things are done in different countries. You know, Some countries have no fees, but they have to um, pay for their own PPE and have to pay for their own equipment. And you, know, you have students in these countries and they know so much about all the materials and they know so much about all the instruments because their system is set up differently. Um, but I also think the international scene as well as the national um, level as well. It, it does give you that greater responsibility. Quite often, the work is representing people, um, you know, representing dental students either from your country, representing dental students um, as we do across Europe. And, and that's quite a responsibility to make sure that you're, you know, having the voice of those people heard. Um, and you really have to do sort of step up in your professionalism and your ability to interact with you know, professors and not just interact with, but sometimes disagree with, you know, we don't, as, as EDSA, we don't always agree with the people that we work with on the best way to do things. And obviously you have to be respectful, but you also have to figure out how you improve those things um, and how you work with people um, to try and bridge those, those divides that you might have. And so the next thing is kind of tips and tricks for, for getting involved in extracurricular activities, getting involved um, at the sort of national, international level and how to really take things forward with, with public health and global health if that's something that you're interested in. Um, and I think, again, it comes back to, to starting to build up skills, starting to build up knowledge, no matter what they are and no matter how much it is. You know, you, you don't have to be an expert in, in everything. Um, you know, having some knowledge about, about different areas is, is also great, you know. Um, you don't have to be someone that knows everything, but do try and build up those skills, whether it's you know learning how to put together a magazine, 
um, learning how to do social media. I mean, one of the big things in health at the moment is how we engage people through social media. You know, we know that that's where people are and people have started looking at, you know, how to work with influencers. And if you have those skills, even if it's in a completely different context to, to health and public health, they're really valuable skills and lots of organizations look for those kind of things. Um, so, you know, start building up those skills. And some of these things I've listed here are different ways of doing that, you know, research opportunities, get in contact with your professors, people that are doing research in areas that you're interested in. If you come across a paper and you think, you know, that's really interesting, I want to know more, you know, email that person. People are really, really receptive when you get in touch with them. Um, you have advocacy opportunities, volunteering, social activism, um, non-governmental organizations, charities, student organizations. There are loads and loads of ways that you can can get involved and start building up those skills. And, you know, you just got to find the ones that you find interesting and engaging. Um, try new things. I think um, recently I've, I've got involved with some more non-dental activities and you really start to see how people do things in, in different areas. Um, I'm, I'm in part of a health systems organization um, called the International Working Group. And, you know, a lot of these people come with, with backgrounds, um, you know, maybe in maternal health, um, maybe in, in uh, non-communicable diseases. And, and building on that experience and, and that they have is, is honestly been fantastic because you, you learn to look at things from outside of, of the bubble looking in. And I think that's really valuable, especially when we spend such a long time looking at uh, clinical skills. Um, and there's some organizations um, that are very accessible for, for dental students. I mean, obviously put, <laughs> put EDSA at the top there, a little plug for, for my own organization. Um, but there's groups like Pelegia, Students for Global Health often have, um, you know, chapters or, or societies in each dental school, friends of uh, MSF, um, which are um, Medicine Without Borders or Doctor Without Borders, um, Medic Mentor, um, Young Leaders for Health, the Healthcare Leadership Academy. Um, these are all organizations that are really great if you're interested in, in public health and global health. And they're always interested to have dentists um, because not many people do get involved. Um, and before, we go on to the next bit and say, try new things. I can really recommend intercalating to people. Um, you know, it's one year and, you know, sometimes that can seem like quite a long time, but building up different knowledge and skills, meeting different people um, is a great way. And to see how sort of students that do what we might call more normal degrees um, live their life because it's very different to, to life at dental school. Um, so I would really put a plug for people that are interested in intercalating. And, and if anyone has any specific questions about that, you know, I'm more than happy to answer either at the end or afterwards. I think networking and networking is something that people think sounds very official, but essentially it's just a fancy description of, of talking to people, you know, sending them a message on Twitter, sending them an email. Um, I don't think I've ever reached out to anyone who's not got back to me um, you know, spoken to people from, you know, loads of different fields all over the world. I had a, a conversation yesterday um, with a colleague um, who I met through LinkedIn, uh, who's based in Nigeria, who's working there as a And that just shows you how you can connect with people from, you know, different continents um, that have the same interests as you. You can get in touch with, you know, professors, people that are working in really senior positions in different organizations. And it's really great. And one, they're sort of, I think the, the best way to do that is through social media. And Twitter, I think, has been, for me, one of the best things that I've done. Um, and especially during my time at EDSA has really expanded my network um, and being able to, to talk with people, interact with people. Um, LinkedIn as well is great. Look up the people that do interesting things that you might want to do and see how they got there. Um, it's really, really useful. So I'll sort of come towards the end, hopefully leave some time for questions. Um, these are just some final thoughts that I had. Um, and the first one, and again, I apologize for the uh, cliche uh, graphic at the bottom, but don't let others dictate what is important. You know, quite often we're happy for, um, you know, professors, universities, 
you know, big organizations to say, oh, you know, these are the issues that are important in dentistry. But if you disagree with that and you think there's another important issue, you know, say so. Make sure that your voice is heard. Students have a real impactful voice. And it's not until you see how many organizations, you know, love to say that students agree with them and the, the power and the emphasis that that gives them um, that you realize how important your voice is. And so don't let other people dictate, um, you know, what you care about, you know, make sure that you stand up for those issues. Um, follow what you're passionate about. Um, you always find that if you're really passionate or you're really enthusiastic about something, you find something really interesting, um, that that will take you really far and you'll meet other people that are also passionate about it. Um, and you can build, you know, great friendships, great collaborations um, with those people. And, and you'll really go far if you do something that you're passionate about. If I think if you choose something that you're not very passionate about, then it can sometimes be quite a slog um, and it becomes quite a lot of effort. And I really think that if there's something that you're passionate about, really, really go in into that because at some point it's going to be important. And I think there's so many things to, to be passionate about in public health and global health. They're such broad fields that you can always find something that you're interested in. Um, and I think this is my final point that you're never just a dentist, you know, um, you have so much to offer as, you know, young healthcare leaders, um, that you have the experience of seeing patients, you have the experience of that professional responsibility and you can go and do great things, either advocating for, you know, oral health and dentistry, advocating for health generally. Um, and there are so many opportunities that you can embrace that go beyond, you know, just being a clinical dentist. Um, and so I think with that, uh, that's my final thought. Um, there is the, the LinkedIn picture again. And um, if you've got any questions uh, and you want to get in touch, then uh, all of my contact details are there. Uh, I'm more than happy for, for anyone to email me, contact me on Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, if you have any questions that you want to, to ask individually, then please do get in touch. I'll be more than happy um, to speak to people. And thank you again um, for attending, for listening, whether you're listening now live or whether you're listening later to the recording. Um, and thank you again to Health Careers Live and all of the team for, for involving me and getting me involved today. Thank you very much.